Hey there and welcome back. So we're, we've been back from our backcountry elk hunt for a couple of weeks now and I've been a little bit slow in getting videos uploaded primarily because uh, just trying to get caught up with work, uh, family obligations, that kind of thing. Um, those of you that have, have left comments on the summary hunt that we did, the little nar short narrative, uh, really appreciate the feedback I've gotten on that. We've got a great response from that. If you haven't seen that, I'm gonna leave a card up here. Be sure to check that out. I'm pretty pleased with the way that turned out. So before that video, um, you may recall that we went through uh, the gear that Adam was gonna take in his pack. So before we left, we went through his gear, his pack, and all of the, diff the different things that he was taking on his hunt. I wanna step back in this video and kind of go through uh, the gear that I ended up taking with us on that hunt. Now, I did some preview videos and talked about some of the different systems that I would be running uh, leading up to that hunt, but there were a few last minute changes. And so I do want to do uh, basically talk a little bit about the Kafaru Cavern uh, pack and then do a little bit of a bag dump and kind of show you the gear that we ended up taking on the hunt. So before we get into the pack itself, um, we'll talk, just go real quickly through uh, the gear that I wore. We've got the Solomon GTX 4D3 uh, boots, worked really well. Real pleased with the way those turned out. From a sock standpoint, what I ended up doing is I went with the REI, uh, I took a pair of the REI sock liners and bought a pair of darn tough uh, socks. These are crew socks. They worked well. I've got one other pair um, that I kept in my pack and I alternated between those. Um, also worn in is, uh, like I talked about before, I just wore this Game Guard, um, just short sleeve uh, t-shirt. Um, synthetic worked just fine. Um, packed it in and then once I got there and was sweaty, I uh, took that one off and then put uh, this base layer shirt on and this is the first light minaret shirt we talked about that before and then i've got my corrugate guide pants um, that we talked about wore those with suspenders worked just fine boxers went with the uh, wool x boxers the merino wool worked perfect took an extra pair of underwear which we'll talk about and just alternated between those uh, midway through the trip also took uh, with me one hiking pole. This is actually it took two hiking poles with me, but on the hike in, I carried one with me, and that was a that's a Mountain Smith Trekker FX. Uh, the one thing I like about that is it's got a padded kind of foam top um, that I can use for my uh, tarp system and to set that up. And then you can unscrew this, and it's got a quarter twenty mount that you can use as a tripod monopod mount. Uh, I do have my Dinkum Action Pod. Uh, that I've got the uh, Sony RX100 on, uh, Mark VI. We've talked about that in a previous video. I generally just carried it just like this. If I needed to take a quick video picture, I could flip it up, have it readily available and ready to go. I do have a quick disconnect um, Arca Swiss mount system on it, so I can alternate between that tripod, which we'll talk about in a little bit as well. The other thing that I had is um, my bino harness. This is uh, outdoor vision. Uh, bino harness worked really well. Uh, in it I have my Vortex. I believe these are Furies. I've had those for a really, really long time. Uh, the Vortex fit in here great. I like the way that this, uh, it, it was comfortable to wear. It's kind of a lower profile, so it's not sticking really out uh, bulky. I like the magnetic uh, closure system on it, so I can just uh, open it up. It folds down. I could put something in here if I needed to. Um, on the side pocket on it, I've got um, the Windicator. Now you see that I've got some Luco tape wrapped around that. Uh, rather than taking the whole roll of Luco tape, I wrapped uh, some around the Windicator and then also had some around the trekking pole that you see kind of right there. Below that I've got some Gorilla tape. Now anybody considering doing that in the future, I'll advise against it because when I did peel some uh, Luco tape off there just to test it, it lost a lot of its, it, a lot of its adhesiveness. So uh, just wasn't any kind of tacky to it at all. So uh, just really didn't work. Um, on the other side pocket, I've got uh, my release aid. It's a Carter thumb release. Again, I did another video about that if you want to check it out. Inside the front pocket, I carried, uh, you know, it's got a little first aid kit that came with it. Just some minor few things. I've got a lens pen. Uh, I've got a compass in here uh, in case I needed just a manual compass. And I carried a little bit of cash and, of course, my driver's license just so I'd have those. I've got uh, a few diaphragm calls in here as well, and that's pretty, pretty much it. Um, on the side, also have uh, the uh, range finder, and this is a Leica 1600B uh, range finder. Worked well. Also kept the uh, Garmin inReach on a carabiner just so it was, again, 
easily in reach. We've gone through the Garmin. I'm a big fan of this. I uh, was really glad to have it for communications purposes and for the peace of mind and security uh, that it affords. Okay, so let's talk about the pack itself. This is the Kafaru Cavern. It's 6,500 cubic inches. Uh, worked really well um, for the purpose that I had it. Again, we were we did we were there for eight nights, total of nine days, hunted seven plus a day on either end to hike out. Um, 6,500 cubic inches was just probably about perfect, um, especially once I uh, consolidated my camera equipment and took the, the RX100 instead of the uh, the Sony A7S II. What I really like about the cavern is the um, the independent, it's got three straps, compression straps across the front. It's got another three independent compression straps uh, on the side and then a side zip access uh, in addition to the top access. On the opposite side, it's got the uh, spotting scope pocket which I didn't run a spotting scope but I was able to use uh, that pocket for other items and then having three independent compression straps on that side uh, allows uh, the proper compression there and so having that independent compression system um, allows you to, to either attach things or access things without losing full compression you know so I can attach my bow to the, the front just like we have here and then pop off the three uh, compression straps across the front and to access the bow and without losing compression on the sides. Got the uh, GoPro with the Brunton battery pack. This is the Hero 3. I actually did end up using that one. Probably would have, might have, uh, if we got a shot opportunity, uh, but we didn't, and so I actually didn't end up using the GoPro. Outside the pack, I've got, uh, of course, the bow attached to it, and then I carried the Phelps uh, bugle tube Honestly, this is one of the first items that I purchased. Great bugle tube. It's too big for what I needed. Um, we ended up not doing a whole lot of calling, um, but this is just bigger than what I wanted to carry around. Uh, I'll probably, before next trip, go with a smaller, a little bit more compact. I'm not a very good caller, um, so I, I think I could have got away with a, a smaller tube than this. Let's see, also on the outside of the pack, I've got, um, as you can see, tethered to the side, I went ahead and go, went with the, the real Crocs that have the uh, strap on them just in case we had a river crossing, didn't want to lose them. All right, so on the outside, again, I, I didn't go with any kind of a lid for the, the uh, cavern pack, but I did purchase some medium belt pouches. I've got one belt pouch on the top um, that I read, ran kind of as a lid, I guess you could call it. I've got another one that's on the, uh, the side here, also a medium pouch. Um, <clears throat> on the waist belt, on one side I've got a small uh, pouch and this is the X-Pack material which is uh, waterproof or water resistant and I went ahead and carried that uh, primarily at, for the RX100 if we got in a situation where we were packing and it was raining it would just offer a little bit of additional protection from the weather. Um, on the other side of the belt pouch I carried the uh, Kafaru Nalgene water bottle holder and then I picked up just a regular Nalgene bottle. This is the cap cap which is has the wide lid and then converts it down to the smaller lid. Um, allows you to put drink mixes and that kind of thing in it. So uh, went with that. So real quickly going through, again, the top pouch, um, mainly just carried, I've got a uh, charging bank. This is an anchor uh, battery pack and I think it's like 21,000 milliamp hours and it worked really well. I got a lot of, a lot of charges on my phone and on the inReach out of this, I took it was uh, also charged the camera directly from this and so um, and I, I still had about a fourth of it left um, when I finished up cows are joining us here so <clears throat> don't mind them um, also in here I carried extra batteries for the camera I did carry a post for um, my binoculars which I did use one a little bit one afternoon but honestly on the hunt that we had uh, it was just as easy to, to, to glass from uh, handheld instead of uh, instead of trying to put it on a tripod. I've got a couple extra broadheads in here, some batteries. I've got some uh, 1.8 millimeter rope here. Um, so just a couple of things that I might wanna have access to. And the other medium pocket that we've got right here are, um, I've got glove liners. These are the Black Ovis glove liners that I picked up from Camo Fire. I've got a, uh, a buff that I wore. This is our TBH Blackout logo buff. Um, I've got the Predator gloves and Predator beanie, and so that's the main thing that I carried in that. I wanted to have quick access to those items. Um, on the other side, with the uh, the waterproof, 
water resistant pouch in addition to using it to carry my camera i got a couple extra batteries in it i've got a sawyer mini a second sawyer mini uh, water filter and so uh, i carried a smart water bottle and this will attach directly to the smart water bottle i could stop at a creek fill it up and either um, drink directly from this or put it into the nalgene uh, depending on what i wanted to do also had some eye drops um, carried some snacks um, you know something that i you know some some energy chews uh, gummy bears some things that I might need while I was making the hike while I was hiking without having to, that I could access without having to take my pack off Inside the pack um, one of the things that I really like about it is the side access zipper uh, I can um, Top load it and then I can keep the things that I need to access quickly like a uh, rain jacket puffy jacket those kind of things I can keep right here in the side pocket without having to dig through the pack um, to access them. inside the pack we've got our uh, native pack um, that I, my original intent was to run this as kind of a lid and then have it available as a, uh, a final approach pack really didn't use it for that it's really not necessary not required for an elk hunt I, I could see where it would be very handy for a, uh, a, a mule deer hunt or something like that this is a ursac bear sack and in the uh, wilderness area that we were hunting again it requires a bear proof container the ursac uh, qualifies as that and so I carried my lunches, dinners, breakfast, that kind of thing in here. Ended up having about a total of 13 pounds of food, including the sack. We would take it and throw it up in a, over a tree and hang it up 8 to 10 feet above the ground. Um, kept the food in there. Worked fine. I, I did dehydrate my own meals. Again, there's a video that I did before we left that talks a little bit about that. And um, worked out well. Um, I really enjoyed that. was one of the highlights of the trip is coming back. Uh, every evening and having those dehydrated meals, uh, the ones that I de dehydrated on my own worked great. Um, I took oatmeal for breakfast and, and cooked those and then uh, basically took tortillas and either dried sausage or jerky or I, I did take some bacon and then some, found some smoked cheese that didn't re require refrigeration. Cook system, um, I carried in this and it's just a jet boil micro mo. We talked about that before, it worked really great. Um, this is perfect size for one or two um, eight oatmeal every morning you ended up using the cup here for the oatmeal um, and then had the boiling bags and so i just poured the water directly into the bags i took uh, two sporks next time i will have a long handled spork um, i ended up taking two in case i misplaced one they ended up in the same bag because i did uh, misplace one temporarily um, and then also, in addition to the boiling bags, while we're talking about food system, I did have a uh, pot cozy, which basically I put uh, water, boiled water, poured it into the boiling bag, and then put the boiling bag inside this. This is a homemade pot cozy made from an automobile window shade. So there's extra clothing. Um, I've got a uh, kiln hoodie, which is the medium weight um, hoodie from First Light. I've got the Kuyu uh, lightweight base layer pants that are zip off wore those a couple of times i took a pair of shorts that i wore when i was sleeping i forgot to mention the side pouch which is uh, designed for which is designed for a spotting scope i didn't carry a spotter but let's unload that real quick i've got my extra um, mountain smith um, pole similar to the other one i've got a seat pad which worked very well for as much sitting as we did sitting and glassing Again, I've got um, a platypus bladder, three liter hydration bladder. That brings up one thing that I kind of didn't, don't like about the cavern or wish that it had um, is there's no um, internal bladder pocket um, for the platypus. So if the pack is full and, I, and like we did, we stopped um, to, to pick up water, the, the pack was full, um, loaded the platypus with three liters of water and then trying to get it back down in here is near impossible and of course it's wet on the outside so you run the risk of getting everything wet um, on the inside of that now um, you can also carry it between the frame and the pack itself which i ended up doing on the previous trip um, but it's also difficult to squeeze that in there and to take the to separate the pack from the frame when it's fully loaded and get it back on so i just wish there was a, a bladder pouch in there that you can just slide it in there all right so um, reaching in here, what I've got is, this is actually, I'm going to leave this down real quick. This is a Kafaru extra large um, pouch. 
and um, what I carried in this is this really kind of camp stuff so the items that I once I got camp set up that I'm not going to carry with me I just kind of kept it all right here um, kept it next to uh, my sleep system and so I'd have quick access to it and it's the, you know of course I've got um, the ropes and the cordage and that kind of thing for uh, the tarp and the, and the setup that I have for ridge lines. I've got some sent away antiperspirant which I guess it was nice to have but out there nine days you're gonna smell anyway and then I took some uh, gold bond powder which I really didn't need um, didn't use I just don't have didn't really have any kind of issues that required that this is a black diamond storm headlamp that I had most of the time it ran in the side pouch that's on my hip um, just so I had quick access to it uh, ended up on the way out in um, in this pack but also have a, uh, a second um, just a, a backup energizer um, headlamp that I would that I use for around camp and just had um, typically put it over my hammock uh, ridge line just so I'd have that quick access to it backup indicators in here which I didn't need there was plenty in the first one I did take an ace bandage which I didn't need um, I have a second pouch in here that has camera batteries um, really mainly just camera batteries and equipment that I didn't take with me didn't need to have but wanted to have um, secondary camera battery um, and electronics kind of kit and that all just stayed right here so um, that all stayed in this pouch camp pillow uh, the Cedar Summit camp pillow worked great I'm really like having a pillow and it's worth the extra weight there um, real quick just this, this is a goal zero nomad solar panel um, that my buddy Tim Getz had sent to me um, I didn't get a chance to test this or, or use it um, to see how well it worked uh, I think it would have worked well but honestly uh, two things one is I never really needed it because I had the uh, battery the anchor battery pack and then number two we really didn't have a whole lot of Sun in the situations where I could test it and so um, I do want to um, test this at some point to see how well it works this is um, possible's pouch in here you know typical thing that you might carry in your possible's pouch I've got some um, orange flagging tape I've got some repair kit for my uh, sleeping pad I did bring some uh, toothpick uh, floss floss picks um, again lunches were dried sausage and jerky and so I knew I would need that I've got a backup release I do have a knife with some extra blades I had some bug spray that I didn't use I've got a uh, Bic lighter with some uh, Gorilla Tape wrapped around that, um, some nitrile gloves, that kind of thing. Um, also in here I have a small, very small um, band-aids and acetaminophen, some, you know, um, I did take some z in case I had trouble sleeping, some Imodium, just typical um, very light medical kit. Um, I did carry some super glue gel. I've got a couple of packet, a couple of little tubes, three I think small tubes of the super glue gel. Um, I kept one in my medical kit uh, in case there was an emergency cut or something that I needed to, to patch up. Adam did carry a little bit larger medical kit, so I didn't feel the need to take a whole lot of stuff. Um, got a few cable ties in here, um, but that's possible's pouch. Um, this is a, a Tyvek ground cloth three by seven inch ground cloth worked great only used it the one time or a couple times when we slept on the ground uh, sleeping pad I ended up changing out sleep sleeping pad I ended up changing out sleeping pads and going with uh, outdoor gear labs uh, sleeping pad which is a little bit lighter than the other one I was going to take but also at the expense of a little bit of R value so I think this one is 1.3 uh, R value the other one is three um, but this one saved me about four to six ounces I think and um, and since I was mostly hammock camping um, I figured it was worth the trade-off in fact I probably didn't need to take that because my original intent was to uh, set up a tarp tent but the, pr the trip that I had gone on previously uh, I knew that there was going to be a limited amount of flat ground and so um, I knew it would be ideal for a hammock camping situation and it was I, I really enjoyed uh, the hammock camping um, this is Yukon Outfitters hammock and uh, actually an ultralight version 2 hammock and then the suspension system. Spent six nights in this, um, worked really well.
Um, and then I've got my tarp, which uh, this is the DD three by three meter or 10 by 10 foot tarp. Uh, I'm just extremely happy with this. Um, extremely versatile piece of gear. I could set up as a cover for my hammock, um, leave the uh, awnings up. Um, I could set up with a pole or go get a kind of a limb or, or a stick and set it up with that. So I could set it up over my hammock um, kind of in an A-frame or an awning configuration, give me room underneath there. We sat there uh, during the evenings um, and it gave me, it gave us a view out. When it rained, it gave us a place to sit without being cramped up inside of a tent. And so um, just really enjoyed the versatility of that tarp. This is the original um, quilt that I had, which is a wind hard quilt that I got off Amazon. Just a cheap down quilt. Um, it worked, I ended up using this as an under quilt for the hammock. Um, worked well, it's not designed as an under, under quilt and I had to do a little bit of uh, MacGyvering on it to get it to work, but um, was able to adapt that fairly easily um, and it worked, worked well. Um, the top quilt that I used is Outdoor Vitals uh, Loft Tech. Um, worked great in the hammock. Um, there was one night that I used it um, when we hiked back down uh, for the last night. We were next to the river. It dropped down to probably about 35 degrees and I did get a little bit cool. And I think what had happened is the, uh, the insulation had kind of um, just kind of separated in the baffles and so I felt cold spots uh, on my arm. So I actually asked Taysen about it to see if they've had any kind of feedback, uh, similar feedback on it. He said they have not, they've had real good luck with it and good reports, um, but he did ask me to send it back in and they would take a look at it and they're gonna send me a different quilt. And so uh, I'm gonna send this back to them and then uh, check out one of their other quilts and just to, that'll give me an opportunity to do kind of a comparison uh, between the two, see how well it works. All right, so the only other thing that I've got in here is my kill kit, which unfortunately I didn't get to use. Again, it's in a Kafaru pouch. Um, got typical kill kit. I've got, uh, you know, some, some cordage here. I've got uh, Kafaru meat bags. Um, I've got my Havilon knife and a couple of extra blades. I also took uh, Outdoors Edge and a couple extra blades. Um, I've got a um, real thick, heavy duty uh, contractor bag that I took. And then aside from that, I got the tag boned out meat bags. Unfortunately, didn't get to put this to use. It stayed um, in the bottom of the pack ready to go and it'll be there for the next trip as well. So that pretty much covers everything that I took on the trip. Um, I'll do a separate video talking about some of the things that I had that I didn't use and then maybe some things that uh, I wish I had that um, I didn't take with me. So again, appreciate you joining me for this video. Let me know if you have any comments on any of the gear that I took and uh, any feedback on that. I really appreciate the feedback that you've given me. Um, we've got uh, a lot of great footage still coming up from the hunt um, that I'll be posting as we go. Um, so again, appreciate you joining me. And as always, I'll look forward to seeing you on the next video.